All right, and we're back with a very, very interesting mod that has just come out for the GBA. And uh, let's, let's take a look at it here. So a lot of you have been um, complaining about the uh, composite output on the latest iteration of the TV out kits. And quite frankly, I don't blame you. Composite is kind of nasty. Um, well... The maker of the kits heard you, and they came out with uh, this monstrosity. So I'm not 100% sure what this thing is supposed to come with, because this is a um, an engineering sample, I guess. I, I don't know what the final board is going to look like. Uh, my board even looks a little bit different than their instructions, and I don't just mean the uh, resistor that they bodged in there. Um, but... I don't, I don't know exactly what these are going to come with, but if my kit is any indication, you get the board, two ribbon cables, both of these are 32 pin, um, same side connectors, and then three wires to wire them in. And the idea is this, you install this and this sits between your Game Boy motherboard and the screen you have inside your Game Boy, and... It provides a micro HDMI port so that you can use this, just plug it straight into your HDMI TV. Um, now, HDMI, so much better than composite. Yes, but is this thing all sunshine and rainbows? Well, no, not, not really. There are some caveats. Uh, we'll get more into that later when I get this thing installed and we can test it out. Um, but needless to say, it does have a few issues but it is still pretty darn good uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at this thing um, the idea is we have our front GBA housing with a uh, IPS kit in it or you can even use the stock screen if you want uh, the instructions say we can even use an AGS 101 LCD but I wasn't able to get mine working with this thing I have a feeling there's something I have to do with either this LED solder pad or this jumper down here, uh, but I'm I'm afraid to mess with this thing too much before I do the video, so I'll tackle that later. Um, but anyway, here is our GBA with our stand-in IPS kit. I have already cut a hole for the. HDMI port. This intent is intended to sit inside the frame underneath the plastic and it is very tight down here. Uh, there is basically no room if we have to put a ribbon cable between these two boards which we probably will. Uh, so I don't know how well this is going to work out but I'm going to try it anyway. The instructions say you're only supposed to use uh, like one of the ribbon cable based kits uh, like one of these things and worst case scenario we'll swap over to this kit but in the meantime I'm gonna try this because we're gonna be using this Game Boy um, but that board goes in and then your Game Boy motherboard goes on top and then it closes up like that and then that is what the installation is supposed to look like and it should not prevent you from using stuff like your wireless adapter but if you're using like a GameCube link cable you're gonna have to use a dongle um, for the uh, link port as an extension because you still need access to that if you want to use the TV out function while you have one of those accessories plugged in or like the GameCube link cable, but it seems to fit. So let's try it out. And I see no reason why it won't work with the kit we have in here, even though this is already a TV out kit. We hold L and R and it bumps off a composite signal into my link port and we can hold L and R and bring it back. Da, 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 da. That's pretty neat. But anyway, let's go ahead and get this torn apart. 
and let's check it out. This is not a solder-free kit. You will need to solder at least two wires if you want audio. Um, and you will also need to modify your shell. Easiest, w well, I think the best way, not the easiest way, is going to be to get a set of like needle files. If you're in a country with a Harbor Freight, you can probably get this exact set for like six bucks. And it's worth getting for console modding alone. It's pretty good. Um, screwdriver. And if you're in a country, if you're not in a country that is Harbor Freight, you can still probably get that exact set, just not from Harbor Freight. <laughs> can't imagine that is a uh, unique to them. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this torn apart. Set this aside, we should not need to modify the rear housing, but we will need to modify the front housing. And I am going to just pull the Game Boy out of this thing. That is the wrong bit. I'm going to strip that out. go there's our TV out wiring for our TV out kit and I am going to pop the ribbon cable off this screen so I can just pull the whole assembly out without having to undo any of my wiring and uh, ooh, you can see I pinched a cable try not to do that um, hmm Trying to figure out the easiest way to do that. I think if we just route it down there, but I don't have enough slack, so I'll have to figure something out about that later. But we'll come back to that. Uh, I guess now would be the time to bench test. I don't really have a working GBA. Well, actually, this one works. There's no reason you can't use this one for bench testing. It just doesn't have shoulder buttons. I don't want to use the other one because that IPS kit wired up to it makes it a little bit difficult. But, oh, this is a 40 pin. Okay. Well, we will dry run the steps because this kit currently only comes in 32 pin. 40 pin is planned, and in fact, it's probably even going to be the exact same motherboard because as you can see, the connectors are right there. You just can't have both connectors on the one board. Uh, but you insert the 32 pin cable, pins down, and then, oopsie doodle. Pop your veil open, and then we would go ahead and slide that in with the pins up. Lock it closed, but this isn't gonna work in here, so I'm not gonna close it. Lock it closed and then plug your screen in to the other connector up here, also pins down. And then you can try it out. There we go. So if you're using an IPS kit, it would be. Something like that. And then, turn on your GBA, make sure your IPS kit still works, and that should be it. Um, I've got 
SP here, however, and I have misplaced it. Let me find my adapter. And my adapter here, which just converts an SP over to a regular 32 pin GBA connector. But we can wire that in here. And then, if we boot this up, uh -oh. it should work. Fairly certain it's pins down. Nope, it's pins up. I had it backwards. On this adapter. It's... Keeping track of these adapters is uh, tedious sometimes. Oh, still not working. Could be this IPS kit, but I promise you it does work. If you've got everything connected up together and it's not working, then something's wrong. Uh, so let me swap some parts out so I can show you a work what a working one looks like. All right, there we go. So it's a little dark because this is an AGS 101 LCD, but it's the adapter chain that I happen to have. So um, ignoring my two adapters, normally you'd be plugging this straight into a GBA, um, but that is what a working screen looks like. And then I'm trying to figure out how I can orient this. I'll put that upside down and then we can take our HDMI, I'll plug it into my adapter here because of course this isn't a full size HDMI and then if we plug in HDMI it should automatically switch to the uh, HDMI output. It doesn't switch my screen off because this is a AGS 101 and realistically we should be plugging the AGS 101 into the 34 pin connector not 32 but we work with what we got. And if we unplug that, our internal screen comes back. So that is how the switching is handled. And I wasn't recording the output, but if I were, you'd see this screen on the uh, what I have it plugged into. Uh, you can also use this particular version uh, that has both output uh, connectors soldered on. You can use it to hook up a second IPS kit if you really want to. Um, one IPS kit here, one IPS kit here. It'll totally work. You just have to use an SP1 on the 34 pin connector or use the opposite of this, one of these adapters on that output there. Um, it'll work. I've tested it. I don't know what the use case is, but it is a thing. It does work. Anyway. Let's go ahead and continue with the install here. I'm going to unplug that, unplug that, set these two aside, and let us go ahead with the shell modification. I think that's the hard part, so that's what we're going to do first. So I am going to take my existing install here. Hopefully this fits because it's going to be a bit of a bummer to cut a hole in this without knowing for sure, but I think we can make it work. Take the buttons out just so I don't lose them. And now comes the uh, tedious part. I'm going to pop that out of there. I'm going to use this shell to mark off what I need to cut. I cut off a little bit too much on the purple one, but I'm going to be very conservative with my lines and do lots of test fits. Right. 
And so now the idea is literally to just attack this thing with my file until I get a notch cut. Um, but since I have a rotary tool in a drill press stand, I'm going to use that as a shortcut for most of the material removal. But then I'm going to come back and hit it with the file to clean up and get the uh, final fit. So I will be right back while I work on, while I knock most of this out. All right, so exactly why it's important to take little bites with the file and then check the fit is I took out slightly too much, so my hole is gonna be slightly too big, but I still need to go down deeper. So I will continue biting away at this and I will be back in just a moment. What is this? Is this part of my screen? I think that is. Anyway. All right, so enough filing later and I got it. I think, I hope, that should be enough. If we jam this in here over the existing screen board does sit in there pretty flush with the edge and then back should go on no problem just like that uh, so again I managed to cut a little bit too wide but I think we'll be good it's not terrible and uh, for those doing this at home with your file, I highly recommend doing this before putting the screen in. As you can see, I managed to nick the back of the screen a few times with the file. I think we're going to be good. I didn't hit it hard at all, but, you know, just a precaution. I also did need to cut out a little bit of this shelf down here to fit the back of the connector. Because this goes in just like that. And if you look in there, perhaps, we're looking through this hole here at the back of the connector. You can see it's below the uh, edge there, but I can't really capture that on camera. Anyway, let us continue with the install. So we're going to need to connect this up to at least two points. I forgot to make accommodations for that. This is this side. I'm thinking I'm just going to cut out some wire accommodations. Can't even tell it's not stock. We want to wire up to SO1 and SO2 test pads. They are right by the B button right here. I'm gonna use the wire they gave me. Trim those down because I like nice and short leads. These are different lengths of wire. I'm going to use the two pieces of wire that are the same. Don't mind my assistant in the background. He is um, performing maintenance on my PS3. SO1 and SO2. Make 
sure these wires aren't shorting on each other because I know the insulation is very thin and melts very easily. Alright. And I think I'm going to leave these wires long because I have no idea how I'm going to route this otherwise. We're going to solder to SO1, to SO2, get those tinned up, and if you get these backwards, your sound will be reversed. So if you solder SO1 to SO2 and vice versa, then if your audio is backwards, you know why. That should be pretty much it. Now we just need to rewire our IPS kit here. So instead of plugging this into the GBA, we're going to plug this in. Pins up on the GBA side. And then from here, This instead gets plugged into the board here. Oh shoot, this has to go between these two boards and unfortunately my real tight wiring is going to make that really difficult. Uh, so I am going to disconnect from here for now. While I manage the routing of these. Try and slip that between. to rewire this kit anyway. That is unfortunate. Kind of expected that though. Stupid problem to have, but here we are. This basically needs to sit flush, just like that. Spot another pinched wire. So I'm going to trim this too. Because I did not do a good enough job with that the first time, apparently.
You having fun yet? Just like that. These wires can actually be incredibly short. I wonder if now that I have this mostly routed, I should shorten them. Yeah. Though on the uh, other hand, having extra slack is nice for maneuvering this thing. I'm going to pull it down here. Because mistakenly ripping pads because I'm being dumb. It's not high on my uh, want list. Just pull the extra out that way. All right. This is L, which one is select? That would be this one. I was wondering if I should have routed these wires through that hole there. Because now they want to go through this hole, but that's, that's not going to work. All right. So this gets real complicated real quick when you try and install it with one of these kits. But I think we'll make it work. I keep saying that over and over, eventually it should work. Probably don't have the space for this, but and yeah, going through that hole would have made way more sense. 
but it's a bit late now. Excuse me while I fiddle with this combination for a little while. I'm going to get everything seated. Alright, I think I've got it. I've been trying to tilt this up and get the HDMI board seated in the cutouts with all the wires going where they need to be. And then that'll squeeze in there. thing is getting my wires to not pinch. Which is probably one of the biggest reasons why they don't want you to use the PCB based kit. And then there's me doing whatever the hell I want anyway. Is it tight? Oh, hell yeah, it's tight, but I think it'll still go together. Um, let's find out. going together. It's only a little bit squeezed. Alright, if ever this thing mattered, now is the time. So of course it's not installed. Hey, That still works. No unsightly uh, pressure marks. And if we hold L and R, we still have composite TV out. Let's bring internal back on and then let us try let me enable my capture here hold on I have to set that up all right got it all set up easy flash turn that on got our audio here I wanted to double check that audio capture was working because there is something a little bit different about this kit and how it handles audio that we want to be prepared for. So I am going to start off with... 
Pokemon Emerald, because of course, why not? So I am going to play it just long enough to get into the overworld, and then unplug this in. Again, it is micro HDMI, very small connector. But once you got that plugged in, you should switch the internal display off, and my capture is now working. Notice I got audio from both sources, the internal audio and the HDMI. Uh, so internal audio is no longer switched, so you probably want to mute that. Um, is what it is? I mean, it's kind of the workaround. Since this kit uses digital audio straight from the CPU, that's the SO1 and SO2 test pads, we would rather use the HDMI audio instead of the... Uh, internal audio. But as you can hear when I have both of these on, there is a little bit of lag with my capture card. This is from my capture card. This is not from the kit itself. Um, there is going to be a little bit of lag with the kit, but it's not anything noticeable. It's not anything big. It's just a little bit. It's just my capture card that's a little bit off. But anyway, as you can see from my capture, this is one of the problems that I was discussing. Um, the aspect ratio is way off. So I just wanted to test that because that had audio. But I'm going to power that off and we're going to switch over to a different ROM. But notice we don't have to switch the kit anymore. Just plugging in and unplugging this cable is good enough. We don't need to save that. Let's fire up 240MP. 240p test suite rather and let us look at is it linearity test yeah so you can see from my circles being ovals that my screen is stretched the Game Boy Advance console uses a three three to two aspect ratio whereas this is outputting a um, widescreen I think it's 720 or 1280 by 720 not 100% sure, don't quote me on that. Uh, I can't tell because my capture card reports it as 1080p no matter what's plugged in. Um, it's, it's a cheap capture card, what can I say? But anyway, that is what our uh, screen looks like now. Uh, we can also pull up a few other tests so you can see by my grid test that we are actually getting the full area of the screen. Uh, which is good because the um, composite out kit does not necessarily give you the full screen area. You do get, I forget if it's on the left or the right, but you get one or two columns cut off at the edge. Uh, and then let's also look at da, 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 full screen stripes. So I don't normally run this test because I don't normally need to, but if you look at this test, I think it's a little bit telling that um, the pixels aren't scaled in a linear fashion. So there is a little bit of smoothing going on. And I mean, you'll have to like pause it, zoom in, screenshot or something. Um, this footage is being captured in 1080p, I think. If not, it's going to be scaled to 1080p. <laughs> um, the video itself is going to be 4K. So that's going to get upscaled in post, but it shouldn't affect it too much if you downscale it back to 1080p. It's not quite, you know, linear, but it's good enough. Um, but you can see some lines are fuzzier than others, and that is unfortunately the way it is with how this is scaled because 720p is not a perfect integer for the internal screen resolution. But if we were to unplug this, take a look at the actual internal screen, you can see that that is perfectly scaled. Ta -da. Also, we can see uh, with that unplugged, you can see swapping back to the internal screen just fine, even though it is an IPS kit. Plug that back in. And I don't think we really need to test anything else in here. Uh, I can look at 
my lag test, there should be audio in the output, but I'm not hearing it. I think it got glitchy when I unplugged it, but you can also see it should be uh, doing that white flash every time. I think that's my capture card that's cutting that out. It's hard to say because I have a really crummy capture card. I'm going to close out of that. I'm sorry, I should have warned you guys about the flashing. Uh, I'll throw something on screen, but if you're uh, listening and then you happen to look over, I'm so sorry about that. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to test here. We can look at the color bars. See, it's not perfect, but it is a heck of a lot better than the composite output. Oh, pull that one back up again. And yeah, there's the gray ramp. I don't know what to do with most of those tests. So it's pretty good. It's not perfect but it's pretty darn good. Let me plug in a GBC card. You notice this is a little bit stretched as well. We're gonna try the scrolling bars test. Let's see how the HDMI handles a screen reset. Um, this should be perfectly smooth, but I don't know how smooth my recording is. I can say that my preview window is not smooth at all. Uh, and if this is not smooth in the recording, I don't know, I'll have to review it after, after the video. Um, if it's not smooth, we're gonna blame it on my capture card because I haven't actually plugged this into a TV yet. But every single thing I've plugged into this capture card has had frame rate related issues. So. I'm gonna blame the capture card, but it does work. Um, the nice thing though is the screen reset command is not triggering some desync with the HDMI or anything weird like that. I don't see any screen tearing. I don't see any weird uh, renegotiation as it resets. So that is really nice. Let's see if we can reset that. Back to menu. Um, I don't know how useful this is going to be because, again, this is a limitation of my capture card. But let's see what the uh, Legend of Zelda test brings us. Notice my audio capture is incredibly quiet. Game Boy Advance itself is louder. I think that's a little weird. But looking at this guy's chain, yeah. It's not appearing right, but again, that's my capture card, I believe. Um, and the pixel response test, you know, to see if there's any ghosting, that is gonna depend entirely on what screen you have this plugged into, so that's, that's not useful at all. Let me do one more thing. I am going to plug in, if I can get it, my Super Mario World 2 cart, and I'm gonna try playing a level on that. Oh, now it's loud again. That was bizarre. I'm gonna put that up to my capture card again. Again, you know, I'm sorry, I, I can't really test this that well because of my capture card, but. Oh! That got messed up. Might as well take Yoshi. <laughs> Again, this has become basically my benchmark game of sorts because I'm so familiar with it. I'm so comfortable with playing it. And it is the type of game that uh, with a lot of input lag would go especially poorly. It's not the best test because I'm used to input lag, 
But I will say this is one of the best... Oopsie doodle. Probably can't even tell, but... This is one of the best screen kits out there, I think, in terms of uh, lag. So far, at least. Again, there's definitely still some lag, but... It's a lot lower than... Uh, some of the other ridiculous combinations I've tested. I think it would be really interesting to test if the, uh... Which kit has more lag? The, um... Composite kit shoved in the front of this thing, or the HDMI kit that the composite kit is hooked up to? <gasps> oh, bye Yoshi. Though, I suppose it doesn't matter too greatly, because at the end of the day, the bottleneck is still my HDMI capture card. Fire flower uh, box. Ah, oh, that's the fire flower box. Oh, oh, okay. Well, ooh, that's interesting. I mean, I can't really put it past the kit because. Is off. I mean, there's no power running through it. Oh, the kit's probably getting backfed from my capture card, so the kit might itself might not actually be off. Let's see if it resets when I re yeah, that's fine. No, this is pretty good. I'm digging it. I don't remember what I wanted to test though. Let's see what I got. Oh, that's not it. Nope, that's not it either. Nope. These are all GB rooms. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have much else to test. I'm fire up Emerald here. And there you go, you want to play Pokemans on the big screen. Here's yet another way you can do it. All right, I think that's about all I've got uh, in terms of this particular GBA accessory. Um, I think I ought to measure the power usage of this thing, but I'm gonna have to do that off screen because I gotta plug it into an HDMI source that uh, does not provide five volts because I want to make sure that the kit is not being backfed. Um, because I want to see what it looks like when it is backfed, or when it's not backfed, what the power usage looks like. Uh, in theory, this should add absolutely nothing to your GBA's uh, power envelope when you're not using it. When you are using it, 
I have no idea what it should be because it shuts off the internal screen, so it's going to depend entirely on what you have plugged into it. But it should be lower too because, again, this can be powered by the 5 volt over HDMI connection. Uh, the Game Boy itself, you still need batteries in the Game Boy. Uh, it's still going to drain your batteries if, um, if you're not paying attention. You know, you'll be sitting there playing, not looking down at your Game Boy. You won't notice that your light has turned red and, uh, you know, dies even though you're playing on the TV. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I think this is a super neat kit. There are a few things I don't like about it. Like I said, that aspect ratio is, it's a killer, man. It would be so great if uh, they had the proper aspect ratio supported in this thing. And the worst part is, is like, I know they can do it because they literally just did it on the DMG kit that I just did a video on and probably isn't going to go up before this one, but it is what it is. You'll see it when I get to that. Um... It's a shame, you know, I, it's like so close. Otherwise, man, it's really good. I really like it. I like how you can just shove it in there and, you know, use whatever kit you want to use with it. I highly recommend using one of the ribbon cable based kits, like I was saying earlier, like one of these things. Um, this is an SP kit. Don't necessarily want to use that, but it would work with this kit. We would just plug this into the 34 pin connector instead of the 32 pin and then just run it with a regular 9380 screen. But at any kit you want, man, it's great. And we still have composite out if we want. So I can switch over to that and then I gotta undo my Velcro here. Plug that in. And then, whoopsie doodle, plug that in. And then we have working composite out, except I gotta change the input. Because it defaults to component every single time. But there you go. We, we have composite, and we have HDMI. Granted, I don't have the audio plugged in, but... Ta-da! Both in one Game Boy. And then... In theory, hooking up an HDMI cable would kill the composite output, but I only have the one cable at my desk, so... Actually, let's find out. We'll just unplug that. Jam that in there. And there you go. And if we unplug that again, I bet the internal screen comes back like normal. Yep. Because it completely kills power to the screen, which is, which is really nice. I dig that. But anyway, okay. I think that's enough. This thing is super cool. I'm really pleased with it. Um, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna throw some links down in the description if you want to check this thing out. Um, again, I am reviewing an engineering sample. This is this should not be representative of the final kit, uh, but the final kit is going to be really darn close. I don't know what the extra cable is for, and I don't know what the extra wire is for. Uh, it could just be that they were feeling extra spicy when they packed my kit. Who knows? Um, I will also throw a link to uh, some micro HDMI to HDMI adapter dongles because if you don't have a cable with micro HDMI, micro HDMI, not mini, um, you'll need an adapter. But once you have an adapter like this, you can just jam a regular HDMI full size in there and it'll be copacetic. Uh, but oh man, this is so good. Uh, Huge shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop for shooting this my way to play with. This is absolutely a really, really cool development for the uh, Game Boy Advance modding scene. 
Um, if you guys want to see some other ways to get your Game Boy on your TV, um, I've done videos on the composite out backlight kits, uh, but other options would be like a Game Boy player hooked up to your GameCube. Granted, video quality is going to kind of suck on that one because GameCube is composite only unless you shell out big bucks for your component cables or you HDMI mod the thing. But if you're going to go through that effort just to play Game Boy, there are better options like Woozle's Consolizer or ZW Energy's GBA HD. Both of those are fantastic ways to get HDMI output in a GBA, or I guess it's more a GBA into HDMI output. They're both consoleizers in that they convert your portable to something that you just set by your TV, plug games in when you want to play, and plug in your Super Nintendo controller when you want to play. And both of them work absolutely fantastic for HDMI out, including supporting the actual proper aspect ratio. Uh, there is another consoleizer kit coming pretty soon. I'm forgetting the details. I forget exactly who makes it. Uh, there was already a review sample sent out to another YouTuber and he gave a uh, review that I wasn't too happy with, but as it turns out, that's just who he is as a person. Um, sorry, I don't mean to name names, but there has been some drama in the past, so I'm not going to bring it up. Um, anyway, if you know, you know, if you don't, sorry. Um, I will probably get my hands on one of those when they finally come out. It's a pretty neat kit, but I have no idea when that's coming. I was under the impression, you know, it's, oh, it's only a, a month away, but this was like six months ago, so I don't know what happened. Um, you'll hear from me when it comes out, I guess. Uh, but anyway, I will do a video on... ZW Energy's GBA HD eventually. I've got at least two different builds planned. I will probably film one of them. Um, I won't do a video on Woozle's Consolizer just because I don't have one. And uh, I can get my hands on one, but I can't get my hands on a kit. I can only get my hands on an assembled version. And I don't think my review would be worth the effort because well, many, many more well-qualified people have already put their two cents in the ring on uh, their opinions on Woozle's Consolizer. So check it out. Um, there's already plenty of good YouTube videos. GBAHD, I don't know how many YouTube videos there are on it, but like I said, I'll make one eventually. Um, you can check out My Life in Gaming for uh, GameCube Game Boy Player composite output. I'll, I'll actually shoot a link in the description to the uh, My Life in Gaming video on um, getting the most quality out of your GBA if you want to play it on TV. Of course, it's going to be a little bit out of date because they don't have one of these, but I guarantee you whatever they told you looked better is going to look better than this because this doesn't do integer scaling uh, and it doesn't even do the correct aspect ratio, and there's no, like, OSD or configuration or anything that we can do to fix that. We're just stuck with the output. Um, if you're feeding it into a capture card, of course, you can always do some post-processing on it, and, uh, but that doesn't really help you while you're playing. Uh, but anyway, I will throw some interesting links down in the description. I will do some power testing, and I'll throw that in my spreadsheet eventually. Maybe not right when this video goes up, but eventually. And um, I'll throw some links to uh, Retro Game Repair Shop. I know they're, I'm fairly certain they're going to be stocking this kit as soon as it actually comes out. And when that happens, I'll throw a link down there. Uh, but otherwise, that's all I've got. Sorry for all my rambling, but I hope this helps, uh, you know, either get an idea of, you know, do you want this thing? Do you not want this thing? And, you know, if you've already decided you want it, I hope at least my trials and tribulations getting it installed help you. Again, highly recommend a ribbon cable kit and not a PCB kit that, like I used. But if you want to do that and you're comfortable with the effort involved, it is possible to do. Otherwise, that's it, guys. I will catch you.
next time. It defaulted to uh, 480p when I plugged this thing in, so let me, uh, let me try that again. Show you how it comes up there. Oh, it's me. Look at that. Come on. There we go. See? 480p. But you can see how much better it looks. I'm getting some weird audio noise. I don't know what that's about. I'm hoping it's uh, something to do with my wiring and not the kit, because that would be unfortunate if it's just that noisy. But hey, it looks a lot better when plugged into the TV, and 480p is a much better scaling resolution than uh, um, 720p was, or even the 1080p that was forcing. Look how sharp it is. Granted, it's still a um, 720p panel that it's plugged into, so. Ain't the best. Let me pull up 240p. And best part is that's closer. Four to three is not quite um, three to two, but. I think I'd rather a 4 to 3 aspect ratio than a um, 16 by 9. What do we want? We want full screen stripes. And you can see how much better that looks than my capture footage. Heaps better. In fact, let's even try as it comes on. My TV takes a little bit longer. Let's try the uh, screen scrolling. It's going to be kind of hard because this is a uh, emulator, but you can see how much smoother that is. Ta-da! There you go. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you next time.